Hey everyone, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here talking about tabular method for integration by parts. In our last example video, example four for integration by parts, we stumbled upon an integral where we integrated something that was u dv. We used the integration by parts uv minus integral v du. And then what we had left over as far as the integral in our formula also needed to be done by parts. So the tabular method is used uh, as sort of a, a way to organize repeated integration by parts in table format so that you don't have to keep writing u's and v's and du's and db's over and over and just kind of do things in a column format as we're going to show you here. If you imagine that you had another integration by parts inside of that, then you would have another uv minus integral v du for this piece, and then maybe it happens even again, and you have another uv minus integral v du possibly after that as well. It could happen multiple times. So looking at the formula integral u dv, you'll notice u, we do have it again, but then we also have du. And if I kept choosing a similar u based on my original u, I would keep taking the derivative of that thing at each step to be du in my formula. Okay, so we're going to have um, a column that is based on u, and we are going to differentiate that column. Um, similarly, you'll notice for dv that v appears in the formula for integration by parts. So if I start with something called dv, um, I take the antiderivative, and then if I were going to, say, choose that same thing or a similar thing to be dv again when I integrate by parts, then I would take the antiderivative of it again and then again, etc. So we will also have a column that is based on dv, and we will actually integrate that column repeatedly as we go down the list. There's one more thing, so you notice we have a third column here, and the idea is I have uv minus integral, and then if that integral becomes another integral, I have uv minus integral, etc, etc. So each time I might have an integral if I do it multiple times. The idea is that you would need to distribute this minus into all of this here, and then you would need to distribute another minus again into all of this stuff here, etc., etc. So the idea is that each row we're going to be distributing a minus. So we're going to say, we're going to call this our plus minus column. And the way we'll do this, we will start with u in the column. We will start with dv in the column. We'll take the derivatives as we go down this column. We'll take antiderivatives of dv as we go down this column, and this column we're simply going to assign a positive one and negative one alternating to represent the sign change of distributing the minus as we repeatedly integrate by parts. One big beware we want to send out to everybody, you really only want to use the tabular method for integration by parts if what you're choosing for you eventually has a derivative of zero, okay? And generally that's going to mean that you're choosing u to be some polynomial, okay? If your dv happens to be a polynomial, or you don't have a u as a polynomial, it's some exponential or something else, this is not something that you want to use. It will be very unclear where to stop in the process if you use tabular methods. So again, only if you're choosing u to be a polynomial. Let's take a look at an example of how to use the tabular method. So here, if I am choosing u and dv, since this is a polynomial and this is an exponential, I would choose my u to be x squared, and so then my dv is going to be e to the x. You can write the dx in here. Just remember that dx is always a part of dv, and you don't necessarily have to write that. This is just helping us organize quickly our derivatives and antiderivatives we would take if it was repeated integration by parts. Again, remember in our plus minus column, uh, we'll start with positive one always, and we'll go down the list and we'll alternate. So if I, in my u column, take all my derivatives first. So if I start with x squared, the derivative of that is 2x. The derivative of that is 2, and then the derivative of that is 0, okay? The idea is, in the table, we will use entries diagonally 
to assign terms in our answer. If I keep going down the column with e to the x in it, I keep taking the antiderivative, I'm just going to keep getting e to the x for this one. So this column is pretty easy. I'm going to actually go one pass to the zero and you'll see why. In our right column, we'll have plus minus one alternating. So we'll have something like that. Okay, so diagonally, we will get all of the terms for our answer. So if you look at starting in the top left and we go down diagonally, so notice this is u, this was dv, so if you integrate this is v, so there's the uv part of the formula, right? If you can imagine what's happening here. So my first term in the answer is x squared e to the x times a positive 1, which would just leave it positive. The next term is going to be starting in the next box in the u column, 2x times diagonally down to the right times diagonally down to the right. So that would give me a negative 2x e to the x, so minus 2x e to the x. And if I go down one more term, and notice I have a 2 there times an e to the x times a positive 1, so that next term will be plus 2e to the x. And you'll notice we can tell we're finished because the next thing and everything past it is zero. Zero times this times whatever's down there would be zero, right? And past this point, we would continue getting zeros as we go down the column. So we would have no terms left. So we go ahead and put our constant of integration on the end. And that is our answer. Okay, we have a couple of examples that we've worked out in a more examples video for tabular method. Check that out. We'll see you in the next one.